Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss about the fibrinolytics. What are these fibrinolytics? These drugs are commonly known as tissue plasminogen activators, which are denoted with the letter TPA. So we have few other drugs like streptokinase, which is a natural extract coming from the streptococci. Similarly, urokinase is one of the enzyme present in the mammalian urine as well as in the plasma. And we can also have a few of the recombinant DNA technology products like altiplase, utiplase and retiplase. So here all these drugs are ending with the suffix A's which indicates these drugs are the enzymes. So today in this video let us see how these fibrinolytics act, what are the side effects, contraindications and clinical use of these category of drugs. First of all let us see the difference between the two terms hemostasis and thrombosis. What is hemostasis? Whenever the blood vessel is going to be damaged, immediately our physiological system stimulates a protective mechanism which results in the activation of the coagulation factors as well as the aggregation of the platelets resulting in the formation of the clot which arrests the blood flow from the damaged blood vessel. So hemostasis is a normal clotting mechanism which reduces the blood flow to prevent the loss of the blood. On the other hand, Thrombosis is one of the abnormal clotting mechanism which is going to be stimulated by inappropriate pathways and many of the risk factors can increase the formation of this abnormal clot. For example, myocardial infarction which produces damage to the cardiac system may increase the abnormal clot formation as well as diabetes can also increase the risk of formation of thrombosis and hypertension. When the blood pressure is going to be persisting for longer periods, they can produce a damage to the blood vessels which can slowly stimulate the process of thrombosis. And finally, atherosclerosis which is one of the important uh, risk factor for the generation of the thrombus. Whenever the cholesterol levels are excessively increased in the body, they can form the atheroma within the intima of the blood vessels. And this atheroma, when it is going to be ruptured, it can activate the coagulation cascade as well as aggregation of the platelets which form a dense fibrous cap resembling the hemostatic plague but this clot is abnormal because there is no real damage to the blood vessel. So in such condition thrombus can be formed which can reduce the blood flow at the particular blood vessel and sometimes this thrombus can also be broken into the small fragments which are going to be transported through the blood flow to the different tissues and in the fine capillaries they can form a block resulting in the embolism. So thrombus can lead to the embolism by fragmentation. In this way thrombus is abnormal clot formation stimulated by risk factors. So any of the risk factors in the patients can stimulate the two pathways. One is the stimulation of the coagulation factors. Different types of coagulation factors are going to be synthesized whenever there is an damage to the blood vessel. But in the thrombosis they are inappropriately activated. For example in the atherosclerosis the endothelial dysfunction can stimulate the release of coagulation factors and they can also activate the other path that is the activation of the platelets. So when this coagulation cascade is going to be activated, they are going to release one of the important coagulation factor, factor 2A. This factor 2A is also called as thrombin. This thrombin is having the various actions in the thrombus formation, but one of the important action is the conversion of the fibrinogen into the fibrin. The fibrinogen is the precursor for the fibrin and by the action of the thrombin, fibrinogen is now converted into fibrin which is the active form and this fibrin forms a meshwork and it can incorporate the aggregated platelets and other blood cells and this fibrin mesh can form a cross linkage which is stabilized by the factor 13A. In this way by activation of the coagulation pathway as well as the activation of the platelets a dense fibrin meshwork is going to be formed which produces an abnormal clot that can be called as thrombus. But this thrombus or hemostasis formation can also be controlled by other factors. This fibrin mesh can be dissolved such that it is going to form a degraded fibrin meshwork which is soluble thereby the clot can be dissolved. And this reaction is mediated by one of the enzyme plasmin which is a clot dissolving enzyme. Normally this plasmin also requires activation. So one of the important mediators is the TPA, tissue plasminogen activator which is released from the endothelium which can convert the plasminogen to plasmin resulting in the dissolution of the clot. 
So that's why tissue plasminogen activators are called as fibrinolytics because they're going to break the fibrin meshwork as well as they're also called as thrombolytics because they're going to dissolve the thrombus that is going to be formed. Now let us see how this fibrin mesh is going to be formed and how this tissue plasminogen activators can act. So this is the fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is the precursor for the fibrin. So here fibrinogen is a polypeptide which is having the different domains. The terminals are the D domains and uh, which are going to be connected with the E fragment. And this fibrinogen can be converted into fibrin by one of the important factor thrombin. Thrombin is also called as factor 2A. And by action of this factor 2A, few of the polypeptide fragments can be removed from the fibrinogen such that it is going to be converted into fibrin. Now this fibrin is uh, a monomer and it can be converted into dimer when one molecular fibrin is combined with the other molecular fibrin. And this process is going to be continued such that the fibrin can produce the fibrin polymer. So this fibrin polymer is going to form a large structure and after the polymerization these fibrin layers are going to be cross-linked which produce the stability of the fibrin meshwork and this process is going to be facilitated by the factor 13A. In this way a fibrin mesh network can be formed which is not soluble and forms a clot at the intima of the blood vessel. Now here plasmin can act as a fibrin dissolving enzyme. So plasmin can act on the cross linkage between the fibrin layers and it produce the dissolution of these fibrin layers such that the degraded fibrin molecules are going to be released which are soluble and not able to form the clot at the blood vessels. Now let us see a blood vessel and within the intima of the blood vessel a fibrin meshwork is going to be formed which forms a clot at the intima of the blood vessel and in order to control this clot formation from the endothelium one of the mediator that is going to be released the TPA tissue plasminogen actuator. This tissue plasminogen actuator is going to acting on one of the precursor plasminogen. This plasminogen is a precursor for the plasmin. Now by the action of this TPA this plasminogen is going to be cleaved such that it is going to produce the plasmin. Now this plasmin can act on the cross linkage of the fibrin meshwork which is going to dissolve this fibrin meshwork releasing the soluble fibrin fragments thereby dissolves the clot that is going to be formed within the blood vessels. Now here fibrinolytics are acting like the tissue plasminogen activators which can increase the conversion of the plasminogen to plasmin thereby they increase the dissolution of the clot that is going to be formed within the blood vessels. So streptokine is one of the tissue plasminogen activator that is going to be extracted from the streptococci and this drug can be used in the various types of uh, clotting disorders and urokinase can be extracted from the human urine as well as it's also extracted from the plasma but this urokinase is particularly used for the pulmonary embolism and other drugs like the altiplase, utiplase, retiplase all these three drugs are rDNA products which are having somewhat less allergic reactions compared with the streptokinase and urokinase. What are the side effects? The important side effect is the hemorrhage. Because these are acting like fibrinolytics, they promote the dissolution of the clot that is going to be formed. So when the clot is going to be removed, they can increase the risk of the hemorrhage. So just like the anticoagulants, fibrinolytics can also produce the hemorrhage. But here, the hemorrhage produced by fibrinolytics can be antagonized by tranexamic acid. Tranexamic acid can control this hemorrhage. That's why it is also called as antifibrinolytic. And other side effects are mainly related to the hypersensitive reactions. So we can observe skin rashes, itching, fever, headache, dizziness, and even reduced blood pressure resulting in the hypotension. All these are the common side effects observed with the fibrinolytics. What are the contraindications? Just we have seen that fibrinolytics produce hemorrhage as the important side effect. So any other conditions where there is an increased risk of hemorrhage, in such conditions, fibrinolytics are contraindicated. For example, in the high blood pressure, when the patient is having a blood pressure greater than 175 by 110 mm of Hg, then these drugs are not preferred because with the excessive blood pressure, there is a increased risk of hemorrhage. Similarly, after major surgeries like the coronary bypass graft surgery, these drugs are not preferred because they can increase the risk of bleeding. And if any patient having the recent gastric bleeding or acute pericarditis and cerebrovascular diseases, in such situations again, these drugs are contraindicated. Similarly, if you have the conditions like the pregnancy, 
these drugs are strictly contraindicated and uh, patients who are having the diabetic retinopathy with increased hemorrhage otherwise the elder patients who are having the greater than 75 years in all these situations fibrinolytics are contraindicated what are the clinical uses so these drugs can be given where there is an abnormal formation of the clot one of the important clinical indications the acute myocardial infarction where there is an increased risk of clot formation in such situations fibrinolytics can be given within 12 hours to produce a beneficial action similarly these drugs can also be used in the other conditions like the pulmonary embolism as well as deep vein thrombosis arterial thromboembolism in all these conditions fibrinolytics can be given in the acute thrombotic stroke these drugs should be given within 3 hours because after 3 hours of the stroke these drugs are ineffective since these drugs are going to produce a dissolution of the clot that is going to form within 3 hours this clot should be dissolved in order to restore the circulatory system so that's about the fibrinolytics fibrinolytics are used only in the emergency conditions where there is an increased risk of the clot particularly in the myocardial infarction thromboembolism thrombotic stroke these drugs can be given and these drugs are going to increase the activation of the plasmin by conversion of the plasminogen to plasmin which produce the dissolution of the fibrin meshwork and since these drugs are going to dissolve the clot they can increase the risk of hemorrhage so in the patients who are having the increased risk of hemorrhagic conditions these drugs should be carefully given and among these drugs streptokinase is uh, extracted from the streptococci and urokinase is derived from the mammalians and we have the other drugs like the altiplase retiplase utiplase all these are the recombinant dna technology products which are having somewhat less hypersensitivity reactions compared with the streptokinase and urokinase so that's for today hope you have enjoyed this video if you like this video please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned to our channel to get more interesting videos